Hi, this is Yabagai, and welcome to a Katane module tutorial on the subject of the Mod Kit, an incredibly innovative creation by the Third Man and maintained by VFlyer. The Mod Kit is actually 32 modules in one, and it picks a random one each time it spawns on a bomb. In my opinion, they can all be read on the fly in the original spirit of Katane. That said, this video is always here to help if you come across anything confusing. If you've read your edge work out as diffuser, there is nothing more to say to the expert. By using the edge work, expert's objective is to determine which of the five components must be enabled. Wires, symbols, alphanumeric keys, LEDs, or big colorful arrows. Determine which of these five components must be enabled, and then solve the module via the rules that use these components. Now, if Expert does not get this configuration correct, and we try to interact with any of these components, that's an instant strike. To get the correct configuration, we need to determine the most common port type that occurs on the bomb. That's up here we would look, at least with this Edgework viewer on, on display. And we see that we have two instances of DVID and two instances of PS2. The RCA and the RJ are there as well, but that's one each, so they don't count. So between two DVI and two PS2, we're looking for the leftmost tied column. That's DVID. Next, <clears throat> excuse me, we need to go down the cells and determine which of these cells has a character anywhere in the serial number. My preference is to look at the numbers because they appear conspicuously on the right hand side over here. So for zero and six, I can see a zero in this cell here, but the six nowhere. Now let's consider the letters. L A Z S. We have A, L is nowhere, S is here, and then uh, Z is nowhere. So we have one, two, three cells corresponding to wires, alphabet, and arrows. So Let's try that. Wires, alphabet, and arrows. That's what expert can face the diffuser, and diffuser pops them up using the scroll arrows and the small diamond button. Now, expert needs to find this submanual in the big manual. The quickest way to do that is to note this in order. Wires, alphabet, arrows, same in the module as it is in the manual, and type in open bracket, wires, alphabet, arrows, comma, separated, just in the way you see it here. And what we notice here is that it pops us right over to this thing on the subject of cruel wire sequences. That's one of the 32 valid configurations. And presuming that we have something that is valid, see, I cut that wire. By cutting that wire, it clearly shows that we were at least on the right configuration, because as you saw, when we had the wrong configuration, that resulted in a strike. One other thing, since edge work is the only determination of which components are on the mod kit, if you have multiple mod kits on the same bomb, it is the same thing for each uh, mod kit on the bomb. So, wires, alphabet, arrows on one, wires, alphabet, arrows on another. And that is, I believe, all I need to tell you. The rest of this tutorial will be on the submodules themselves, but before that, I want to take you back to the office and show you one more cool feature. Hi again, we're in the office now, and I wanted to go over the mod settings for the mod kit, as it might help you out. First of all, if you have none of these checkboxes enabled, then it will simply just give you the module as it was intended. It will determine the configuration based on the edge work. However, if you check off Enforce Components, now it will stick you with the components that you select from these five checkboxes here. So for example, if we wanted to practice that cruel wire sequences we had earlier, earlier, wires, alphabet, and arrows, then we could hit Enforce Components, and then the following three boxes. One other setting I wanted to mention is that if you wanted to go by Enforce Mod ID, if you have these top two checkboxes both enabled, then it will step through the 32 possible, or two to the fifth possible, configurations. 
try running 32 mod kits on a bomb with these two settings enabled. Or maybe it might make a good mission bomb sometime, hmm? Anyway, that's one possibility. But let me show you what happens with that disabled and us enabling the components wires, alphabet, and arrows. Let's get out of this and go to our spiffy dynamic mission generator. And what we will see... Okay, I've run 32 of these for some reason. But when we go to any one of them, we see that we have wires, arrows, and... Uh, wires, alphabet, and arrows, as we intended. And also this word disabled appears. That means that these small buttons up here no longer work. And that, rather than basing it off the edge work, you are now solving the module with wires, alphabet, and arrows. You have forced cruel wire sequences to be the module of choice for the mod kit. So, if you want to practice a module, particularly the ones that are less likely to appear, that's paranormal wires, certainly. Having all five components is difficult to get. Now you know how. Anyways, the rest of the tutorial will be uh, split into chapters so that you can easily fast forward to the module of your choice. Of course, if you're enjoying this tutorial so far, feel free to sit back and relax and enjoy the show. I've got a lot of explaining to get through, so hope you're ready for it. Either way, enjoy. This first configuration doesn't have a name, but I'll call it On the Subject of Tool Mod Kit. If none of the components appear on your mod kit, you press the button anytime. VICTORY! If your mod kit just has wires, you are on the subject of colorful wires. And this big circular device. Start at the first digit of the serial number. If you have an even number of digits as we do here, go clockwise. If you have an odd number, go counterclockwise. Assign the first three colors to the first wire, the second three colors to the second wire, the third three colors to the third wire, and so forth. If the wire has any of its assigned colors literally on the wire, cut it. So, cut the first wire if it is yellow, white, or green. Cut the second wire if it is red, blue, or orange. Cut the third wire if it is purple, yellow, or white. Cut the fourth wire if, continuing around, it's green, red, or blue. Cut the fifth wire if it's orange, purple, or yellow. Or if you prefer, process of elimination since we got through the first four wires safely. Let's play again. What I'm saying right now as a mantra is pretty much what the expert should be telling Diffuser as well. Of course, in their own head first, start at the first serial digit of four. With an odd number of digits, go counterclockwise. Assign the first three colors of the first wire, second three to the second wire, and so forth. And then, expert tells Diffuser, cut the first wire if it is orange, blue, or red. Cut the second wire if it is green, white, or yellow. Cut the third wire if it is purple, orange, or blue. Cut the fourth wire if it is red, green, or white. Cut the fifth wire if it is yellow, purple, or orange. And that is on the subject of colorful wires. If you have just symbols on your mod kit, you are playing adjacent symbols. To start, turn your serial number letters into alphanumeric positions. So for our serial number here of U96RT8, the U is the 21st letter of the alphabet, 9 and 6 remain, R is 18, T is the 20th letter of the alphabet, and 8 remains 8. Concatenate or smush the digits together, then convert them to directions using this chart. So 2 becomes right, 1 becomes up, and so on. This is what you'll find the resulting directions are when we do this. Starting on this black tile here, we're going to navigate through the maze using these directions. Diffuser will tell us the three symbols we need to keep an eye out for. They are forward C dot, Zeta, and Tongue Face. If we roll over any of these symbols, we need to make a note of it. Let's see. Now we're going to take the moves in order. Right, we hit the Tongue Face. Up, up, right, up, left, right, right, left. So we hit the Tongue Face, then we hit the Zeta, so we have to press them in that order. Then the remaining symbols from left to right, but that's a solve there. Let's try again. Remember, we're going to have the same serial number, so we're going to have the exact same move sequence. This time the three symbols are Euro, not equal, 
and Droopy R. Which is... Oh, goodness me, I'm sorry. Here we are. And then we take the same moves again. Right, up, up, right, up, left, right, right, left. We didn't hit any of the symbols that time, so the correct solution is simply left to right. And that is adjacent symbols. If your mod kit just has alphabet keys, you are playing edgework keys. The objective of this module is to press the keys where the letter is no more than the number. The letter takes on a value from this chart here and based on the edgework on your bomb. Number of PS2 ports is zero. That's no more than five, so we press it. Number of serial ports is also zero. That's no more than seven. Second serial number digit is eight. That's no more than nine. Also process of elimination, we've already pressed two keys, so the third one must be safe. Let's play again. New bomb, new edge work. The number of PS2 ports is 1, that's no more than 7. The number of serial number letters is 3, that's a tie, but that is no more than 3, so we press it. The number of serial number digits is 3, which is no more than 4, so we press that. It's even easier to consider that if you have a case where you've pressed two keys safely, you either disarm the module, or the third one is the only one left to press. Either way, you have a surefire solve. The number of parallel ports is zero, which is no more than four. The number of ports is zero, which is no more than three. And the right key digit, which is itself five, so five equals five, so in a case like this, that's always going to be a press. Simple as that. If you get just LEDs on your mod kit, you are playing LED pattern. The objective is to find this line of three LEDs in an orthogonal line among any of these grids over here. Now, the catch is that it must be in an orthogonal line, not a diagonal one. And once you find it in a grid, you have to press it when the last seconds digit of the timer equals the grid number that you found it in. Just like that. Blue, purple, purple. It was backwards in that case. Let's play again. This time we're looking for purple, purple, red. I'm going to try and find a chain of two purples like this, although that doesn't connect to red. There's no chain of purples here. There it is. It's in a line of three, purple, purple, red, just like you see it here in, in this case. Remember, it can appear backwards, but we found it in grid three, and thus we'll press the big diamond button when the last second digit is a three. Trash the annotations. Let's play one more time. This time we're looking for the configuration blue, red, purple. This is going to be tricky. It's three different colors. Let's see. Blue doesn't connect to red orthogonally anywhere except here, but that's not purple, so that goes away. Blue, red, purple. Aha. There we go. We got our line straight away. It could appear in more than one grid, but we found it in grid two, so we'll press it. Last seconds digit two. Grid is two. That's LED pattern. Well, if these arrows look like a Simon module to you, you're absolutely right. If you have just arrows, you are playing Simon Shifts. To start the module, press the big diamond. Blue down is illuminated. We find blue down on the table, and then take the cell it's pointing at as the response. In this case, green left. On an odd numbered stage of this multi-stage module, we respond with the colors we've obtained, in this case, green. Now another flash is added to the sequence, but it's blue down again. So we add green left again to our response, since that's the cell being pointed at. This time, we respond with the directions. Coincidentally, it happens to be green left, but that's not always the case. This time we get yellow right, which gives us blue left as a response. On an odd number stage, we respond with the colors, which is green, green, blue. And finally, blue down, which points at green left again, and we respond with the directions we obtained on an even numbered stage. Left, 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 and that's a solve. Anecdotally, I've only seen this module diffuse in four stages, even though the manual tends to obfuscate this, much like the original Simon Says manual. However, I think the theory is that it always does it in four. Still, if you're queuing on Twitch plays, be careful. Let's play again. Big diamond. 
red down, points at yellow left. On an odd number stage, we respond with the color. Adding red down again adds yellow left. On an even numbered stage, we respond with the arrows we've obtained, left, left. Add another flash. It's blue left, which points at yellow right. On an odd numbered stage, we respond with the colors, yellow, yellow, yellow. And finally, we get yellow right as a given cell, which gives us blue left as a response. Hey, they're looking at each other, how about that? Blue left. On an even numbered stage, we respond with the arrows, left, left, right, left, the bottom row here. And that disarms the module. If you have wires and symbols, you are playing runic wires. The objective is to cut each wire from 1 through 5. However, before cutting each row, look at the table whose rows are the wire's colors, excluding white if applicable. So, for the first one, if it is blue and red, we need to check if any of the hand mirror, trident, and tongue face appear in either row. In this case, the tongue face appears here, so we'll press it, the hand mirror appears here, so we'll press it, and the trident appears in the blue, so we press that, and then cut the wire, and the lights reset. Next wire, red and green. Tongue face is present in the red row. There is the hand mirror in neither of these rows, so we won't press. And trident, uh, also no, so we'll cut that wire. Third wire is orange and blue. The hand mirror is there, the trident is in blue, and the tongue face is in orange. Now we cut the wire. Next wire is yellow and blue. Trident, tongue face in yellow, and the hand mirror in blue. Then cut that wire. And finally, red and purple features the tongue face in red, the trident in neither of the rows, so we leave it alone, and the hand mirror, likewise, will cut the wire, and there's the green light. Wires and Alphabet gives us the opportunity to play indexed wires. The objective is to press every key from left to right, but before we just press a key, we need to determine what is the target color. So we consider each key from left to right, starting here. Does the keys letter come before the letter N? No, after. So it's we go down here. Is the letter in the serial number PTNB? No, it isn't. Is the digit greater than 4? Yes, it's 7. So that means the answer is yes, and we are going for purple. That means we need to cut all purple wires. This one and this one, then press the key. New wires appear and we do the same for the middle key, Foxtrot 2. Does the keys letter come before the letter N? Yes, it does. Is it a vowel? No, it isn't. Is 2 in the serial number? Yes, it is. So green is our target color. We cut all green wires, then press the key. Finally, Echo 5. Does it come before N? Yes. Is it a vowel? Yes. Is the digit even? No. Target color is red. Cut all red wires, then press the key. One more time, shall we? This time, Kilo 3. Does the, the letter come before the letter N? Yes. Is it a vowel? No. Is 3 in the serial number? Just 2's here. So the answer is no. We're pressing blue. Or cutting blue wires, excuse me. Then pressing the key. Next, does Mike come before November? Yes, it does. Is the letter a vowel? No. Is the digit in the serial number? No. So we press. Again, we're cutting blue wires. Press that key, and now we move on to the third key. Does the letter come before November? No, it is November. That's a no. Is the letter in the serial number? N is not there, so no. Is the digit greater than 4? No, it's equal to 4. Tricky questions, but it was strictly greater or strictly before. The answer is red. We cut the red wires and then press the key. And that is the module disarmed. With wires and LEDs, we're playing wire instructions. Build a complete rule by taking these LEDs in order. First color, first table. Second color, second table. Third color, third table. And read the resulting sentence. Cut all wires colored with multiple colors and all wires with green coloring, but do not cut wires with orange coloring. In other words, we will never cut wire three. Otherwise, cut all wires colored with multiple colors. Well, that's that. 
we didn't have any green, so there's nothing to consider. In this case, this is more so an or situation, these top two tables. Even though it says and, that's just... Uh, you can include this and this, but it's really this or the other. Red, orange, red are the three LEDs here. Cut all odd wires and wires with yellow coloring, but don't cut single colored wires. Okay, so we ignore one, three, and five, and there were no wires with yellow coloring, so we solve. One possible way you can do this is to take the tables backwards, as we'll do here. One more time. Red, green, yellow, but let's consider it backwards this time. Don't cut wires adjacent to wires with blue coloring. So don't cut two and four in this instance, so we'll just consider the odd numbers. Oh, look at this! Cut all odd wires! I swear I didn't plan that, but can you see how taking the tables from the bottom up helps more? That's a strategy I hope helps you out as you take on wire instructions. Wires and arrows brings up the subject of wire maze. In wire maze, we are trying to get from the start to the finish, but we determine those locations. So we can start from red and blue, we can start from red and green. So if you find these five wires after having diffuser convey them all to you on the maze, then you can find the shortest route. Let's say here to here. So let's go from blue and white to red and white. Now, we cut the finish wire first, that's the red and white, and cut the starting wire second. Then, we make a move. The golden rule is to make sure you cut, then move. We've made this move to the right, and now we have to cut where we stand, then make a move. Once we make it to the finish tile, we can cut that wire and that disarms the module. One more time, let's take a slightly more circuitous route just to make sure we're showing everything. Let's see, there's yellow and orange wire on there, purple and white is the second wire, red and white is the third wire, solid orange the fourth, and blue and white the fifth wire. Um, you can see there are shorter routes available, but let's actually make this the start. If I could, writing with an eraser is a terrible idea. Start and finish, so we'll cut the finish wire first, the start wire second, and then make a move. Remember, cut then move. If you break the sequence, or break a wall, or cut the wrong wire, you get a strike. Cut where we stand, move. Now we're stood on green and orange, cut then move. On yellow and white, cut then move to the destination of yellow and orange. One more thing I'd like to show you is the reset feature on this module. If you, oh goodness suddenly threw a blackout curtain on everything. Let's go from blue and purple this time, and we'll move down. So we started on blue and purple, move down. If we suddenly got lost, hit the big diamond button, and it resets your position, and notice how it helpfully tells you where your start position was by giving you a cut wire. So now we can make a move right instead. And we're back up and running. Enough wires already, let's play with symbols and alphabet. With just those six keys, we can play encrypted keypad. All these symbols represent keypad symbols, these three obviously with AT, Kitty without shield, and Kitty with shield, and these three keys also represent symbols as well. C5 represents uh, the ring of semicircles, we'll just call it that. Um, E0 represents forward C dot, and I6 represents a kitty with shield. Well, how about that? That means we've effectively double counted kitty with shield, and we need to make a note of that because it's going to count double in just a second. Okay, all these symbols appear twice except for X underline and hand mirror, which we did not get, so for the rest of these we need to find the duplicate. C dot goes here, semicircles goes here, kitty with shield was already found up here, AT is over here, kitty without shield is over here, and semicircles is already found. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Sorry about that, we've already got it all. Now we look for the column which has the most keypad symbols in it. 
Notice that we double counted Kitty with shield, although you'll also find that it's not enough. There are four in this first column, so we need to press all the symbols. We need to press forward C dot. Actually, we could take them in reverse order. I'll just demonstrate that to you. Kitty without shield. We need to press AT, which are symbols. Semicircles with Charlie 5. We tell Diffuser that. And forward C dot is Echo Zero. Noting down the coordinates and which symbols they are will make it easier to communicate with your expert as to which symbols they need to press. Otherwise, you might have an accident of, oh, I don't know where the forward C dot is. So hopefully that helps. This is Symbolic Morse, the combination of symbols and LEDs. To start this module, press the big diamond button. Each LED will now flash a single Morse code letter on loop, forming a three letter word from left to right. In this case, the first LED is blinking dot dash dash space, and then the second one is doing dot, and then the third one is doing dash dot dot dot. The third LED is. See that? I can tell you offhand that those Morse letters are W-E-B. There's also a Morse code reference available here. And that means we are looking for web in the chart over here. What it's telling us to do now is to press the backward C dot if it's available, press the question mark if it's available in that order, and of the buttons that remain, press them in the order position one, position three, and position two. And that is the module solved. Let's go upstairs just so I can show you this first second rule in action. And you see we have one already in progress. Dot dash dash dash. Space. Dot dash. And the third one is dash dash. And that's that. That is. Um, J A. M jam. That's over here. In this case, it's telling us to press the semicircles if it's there, which it is, then press the kitty without a shield if it's present, then press 3, 1, 2. That's the second time in this tutorial we've seen kitty without a shield, so be careful you know the difference between kitty without a shield and kitty with a shield if it appears anywhere amongst these symbols. There it is. Make sure you know the difference. Symbols and arrows? Let's play perspective symbols. The objective is to navigate from the start location to the three target symbols. In this case, we're looking for the euro, the underlined X, the three symbols on the keypad, and the omega symbol. We start at the position indicated by the first two digits of the serial number, row, then column. Row, then column. That's over here on this blank space. Now, we can press a symbol if we can see it via an orthogonal line of sight, which we happen to be able to do already on this omega symbol, so we can press the key. The objective is to light up all three keys in a similar fashion. Of course, we can't cross a wall, but we can use these arrow keys freely to navigate the maze. So let's go from our starting location, up, left, left, up, left, left, and we can press the X underline button because now we have a line of sight from our current position to a target symbol. Press that. If it helps, and it's not too dramatic here, but on future mazes, keep this in mind because it can help. You can press the big diamond button to reset your position back to the start, as indicated by those flashing arrows. And But notice how the progress doesn't go away. We're still two thirds of the way there. And now we can step up, up, right, up, 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 right, up, and with line of sight on the Euro symbol, we can now press it to disarm the module. Semaphore keys is a pretty straightforward concept. This module we get from alphabet keys and LEDs. And all we have to do is simply follow this gigantic if otherwise table. If the serial number contains both the letter and the digit of one of the keys, press that key. In this case, I like to look for the digits first, much like we did earlier. 236, well, there's a two in the serial number. Is there a delta? Hey, there it is so we can press that key. Let's try another one, see if we get that lucky again. This time we have the letter and digit of one of the keys again. 137, oh, there's a one up there, and there's a Romeo. Oh my goodness. Come on, let's get a better one here. 
One, four, five, ah, okay. No matching digits in the serial, so this rule is now false. If one of the key's numbers is prime, that really should say if at least one of the key's numbers is prime. That tripped me up, so just make sure that doesn't trip you up as well. So there is one prime digit and there's a green LED on, that's false. If all three LEDs have the same color, nope. If the digital room if the digital root of the sum of the serial number digits is one of the key's numbers, press the key with that number. In this case, we'll take 7 plus 3 plus 0 is 10, and then 1 plus 0, the resulting number, is 1. 1 does appear in the key's numbers, so we press it. That's a solve. If you haven't played Digital Root, the definition is on your screen now. Um, other than that, I believe all these rules are pretty self-explanatory. Arrows and alphanumeric keys gives us alphanumeric order. To start the module, press this big diamond button, and we'll light up zero to four arrows. I've moved to the normal bomb room, by the way, because factory was blinding the lights out a little bit. It was a bit too bright. Here we have red, blue, and green lit up. If you press the arrows, nothing happens. Remember your complicated wire strategy. You can start in the middle and go out through the circle that wasn't lit up, so that's out through yellow, and that gives us the letter Y which gives us the sequence reverse homotopical. I'm gonna level with you, I have no idea what that word means, and dictionary.com, which I have open here, doesn't seem to either. Uh, for, for reverse anything, we go from right to left, and then we press the keys in reverse order that they're mentioned in the sequence. So R, E, D, let's see, D is last, E is, R is here, and E is here. Okay, so it's E, R, D from right to left, and that disarms the module. Let's play this again. After a light dance, it gives us red and green, and we get the letter Q this time, in keyboard order. Okay, so uh, that will be a sequence defined over here, which is O, D, J from left to right this time. By the way, if you get the order wrong, it doesn't immediately punish you, it only gives you a strike after you complete the sequence, and then the red light comes on. Other than that, once you get the sequence correct, that's the module disarmed. Here it is, the last troublesome duo of components, LEDs and arrows, which creates Color Compass. In this case, we need to look at the three LEDs, order doesn't matter, and press the colors and directions in, order, in the order that they appear. So purple, yellow, blue is three different colors. It appears blue, yellow, purple in this case. And we press the arrows and colors as we see them. Right, down, red, down. When this occurs, an LED gets taken away and we have blue and purple remaining. Now we go to two different colors and see blue, purple here. Up, left, yellow, green. And then finally solid blue, which brings us to down, right, red, down. If we strike at any point let's say we go to this one here red blue yellow it's supposed to be left blue down up if we go left blue down and then flub and hit down that's a strike and the sequence resets uh the input for that stage resets so we have to start all over left blue down up one tip i want to point out is that if you do have a pair or triple of colors there's a chance for a shortcut in this case, you go directly to the two different colors table. That would be green, orange. That is down, up, down, yellow. And when the green LED goes out, as it luckily did here, now you're down to one different color, and that's orange. So the diffuser can enter the sequence twice in a row. Left, green, up, up. Left, green, up, up. And that's that. One other tip is that the table is nicely organized. It starts with all the groups that include red, then all the groups with green that don't include red, all the groups with blue that don't include red or green, and so forth. You can see the order of color priority here. All right, it's our first module with three components and it is a doozy. This is called sequence cut. The objective is to cut all five wires, but this module starts with the symbols. Find these three symbols in the chart here. I had an advanced peak, so I know it's here, here, and here. Take the lowest numbered one, and note down the color sequence to its right. So to the right of the, the racket or the hand mirror is purple, orange, blue, green, white, yellow, red. That's the starting sequence. And then a la light cycle, 
we are going to make three switches using the alphanumeric keys and these rules to guide us. Starting with the first key. If the key's letter is in the serial number, no. Otherwise, its referring position is the alphabetic position of the letter, which is 16 in this case, mod 7, subtract 7 repeatedly until it's in the range 0 to 6, add 1, and there's our number. If the key's digit is between 1 and 7, it refers to that position, no. If the digit is 0, it refers to the position equal to the position of the first digit in the serial number. Since the first digit is in the third position of the serial number, then it is the third position here. Now, uh, next key. V is 22, and it is in the serial number, so its referring position is the same position of the first occurrence in the serial number, which is the first position. So, 1 it is. And now, if the key's digit is between 1 and 7, it refers to that position? No. And otherwise, so it's not between 1 and 7, it's not 0, so in this case, otherwise it refers to the last position of the order, 7. Then finally, R. Is R in the serial number? No. Take its alphabetic position, mod 7, that's minus 14, add 1, and then uh, let 1 be 1 because it is in the range 1 through 7. Now we make these three swaps in order. Since we got 3, 3, that's the same position, there's nothing to swap. Then we swap positions 1 and 7, that's red with purple, end to end, and 5 with 1, that is white and red switching. And finally, we cut all wires with those colors in order. So we cut all the white wires. Let's make a mistake and just show you what happens. That's a strike, and the module resets. Let's try this set now. Cut all white wires, then cut all remaining orange wires, then cut all remaining blue wires. And of course, once we get to this point, we can just cut the last wire, and that's a solve. This is Hierarchical Wires, and I've added in some text annotations atop our wires, symbols, and LEDs to remind us that this is a three-stage module and that the LEDs and symbol keys both correspond to the stages from left to right. For the first stage, our objective is to cut all orange wires per the LED in the sim uh, order indicated by the symbol Zeta, wherever that is here. So we're considering the wires in this order. Three, five, this is orange, we cut it. One is orange, we cut it. Two, four are not orange. To confirm our answer, we press the symbol button, and with the green light, we're on to the next stage. Now, we're going to cut red wires in the order given by the black star, but I'm going to do something completely ridiculous and cut all the wires. Completely incorrect answer, but I haven't gotten a strike yet. This is a so-called latent strike, like in Caesar Cipher. You know the answer's wrong, but you can come back to another module and take the strike later. Once you hit the symbol key, there's your strike and you're back to stage two. You don't have to fully reset. Let's do it correctly this time. Red wires in this sequence again. Three, two, this is a cut. Five, one, four, and then press the symbol button. And finally, green wires uh, given by the semicircles. It is five, four, one is green, two is green, three is not. We press the symbol button. And that is that. Wire signaling is the module when we have wires, symbols, and arrows on our mod kit. The objective of this module is to take the table row by row, top to bottom, stopping at the first table where both the required symbols and the further requirements condition is true, in which case, cut the wires that the cut rule specifies. Exception, if no wires are cut as a result of the cut rule, proceed as if the rule is not valid. Let's take this module, for example. We need to base this uh, the rules off of the symbols that have appeared in the arrow position, so Diffuser would do well to give them out. In this case, we see them both here, so let's proceed. H or Zeta? No. Kitty with a shield? No. Do we have gamepad and a backwards C dot? No. 6 or BT or uh, Kitty without? The, there's a BT in the middle, so that's true, but the down arrow is not blue, so this condition is false. Therefore, we keep going. There's no X underline. There is a tongue face, so this condition, this not condition is false, therefore, we continue. Trident and Euro, neither is there, we needed both. Copywriter AT, no. AE, no. Star, Black Star, rather. 
not equals or paragraph? No. No. Uh, in which case we have made it to the bottom row. No requirements at all. We cut wires two and four to solve the module. Let's take a look at this one down here. Just reset our coloring here real quick and get into that. Is there an H or Zeta? No. Kitty with a shield? No. Is there a gamepad and a backwards C dot? Well, there's one but not the other. That's false. Six or BT or Kitty without a shield? There's a six there, but the down arrow is not blue, so it's false. This down arrow is not blue, rather. X underline false. Not tongue nor forward C dot. That is true. And the green arrow is diametrically opposite to the yellow arrow. For an example of adjacency, it's at a right angle, basically. I've drawn it here. I've drawn it here, I meant to say. In which case, we are cutting all wires with orange coloring to solve the module. Um, the only rules we haven't gone over, prime numbers are 2, 3, 5 from 1 to 5. And all wires adjacent to purple wires means not the purple wire itself, unless it, in turn, is adjacent to a different purple wire. If you've got wires, alphabet, and LEDs on your mod kit, you've got probably one of the more iconic sub-modules from this module, Power Grid. In this object of Power Grid, we're trying to cut all the wires that are safe. Wires are dangerous if any pa instance of it on the diagram bridges a lit LED on the module through a character present on the alphanumeric keys. For example, follow along with my highlighter here, and notice we have to consider each of these wires essentially. This red-orange wire, for example, is a not a safe wire because it bridges this red LED, which is lit, via this path here through a key that is present on the alphanumeric keys. So lit LED and a character present on the alphanumeric keys means that if we cut that wire, that would be a strike. So uh, let's not. Let's consider the next wires down, orange and purple. Uh, this connects through a red LED as well, but Delta and 1 are absent from the alphanumeric keys, so that's safe. Except every instance of the wire, save for this one and this one, appear twice on the diagram. So we have to consider each instance. Orange and purple is also appears here, but it's out of a green LED, which is not live because it's not on the module. So this is a safe wire. And that solved the module instantly. I didn't expect that. Usually you have to cut many more wires than that. Hi again. I've pulled up this video again because I wanted to make darn sure you understood why this module was solved by itself then, with all those wires still uncut. Yellow and purple was dangerous because it came out of a purple LED, purple LED, through the zero character in the bottom right of the diagram. Um, the red and white wire was in the top left with the red LED through the number six. And the green and purple wire uh, went through the blue LED through golf. Both of them were on, present on the module. Again, forming those straight lines we were talking about earlier. Now you know. Let's move on to this one here and see what happens here. This time we only have two live power sources because it's purple and orange. Those are the only colors represented uniquely. Or distinctly, I should say. So yellow and orange appears here out of a yellow LED and here out of a purple LED, but through alpha and zero, that's the straight line path to the bomb, and alpha and zero are both absent from the alphanumeric keys here, so that's a safe wire to cut. Blue and purple are here, which is through purple and Victor and X-ray, but they're not on the module, so that's safe. Blue and purple also appears here, this tiny little wire over here, out of yellow, which is completely safe, so that's a safe wire to cut. As for purple and white, that's one of those unique wires I mentioned, so that's a little shortcut. Since it comes out of green, we can stop looking and just cut right there. Um, purple and yellow is the next wire in line. Purple and yellow we can find here out of purple, but alpha and zero are absent. It's the same root again as the yellow and orange, as a matter of fact. Let's see, yellow and purple also appears out of here, coming out of yellow. And that's also a wire that shared a path with the yellow and orange. So that yellow and purple wire can be, once I get my pen out, cut. Again, once you get four wires cut, it's process of elimination on the fifth one. If it hadn't solved then, you know it's the last wire to cut. Much the same logic as, uh, say, complicated wires, for example. With wires, alphanumeric keys, and arrows, we are going to cruel wire sequences. 
For cruel wire sequences, it functions a lot like the vanilla module. So let's just dive right into it and I'll show you how this variant works. This first wire, you are to take the instance of each color. Striped wires count as multiple colors, but in this case, white doesn't appear on the table. So we only consider purple in this case. For each instance of each occurrence of a wire, do the characters in that cell appear anywhere among the alphanumeric keys? Does JV4 appear anywhere among here? You bet that J appears here, so we cut the wire. As for green and yellow, do any of these characters appear? F26, RU1, I see a U, I see a 2, so on multiple counts, this wire needs to be cut. Solid white wire, you see I've called out this rule in the manual, that is never to be cut in any circumstances. It's basically a freebie as long as you don't touch it. Uh, wire number four is effectively just green. AEG, not on the alphanumeric keys, leave that wire alone. And finally, red and green, D89, NO0, remember O is a letter, zero is a slash through to denote the number. We have the number zero, um, so we cut that wire. Remember, alphanumeric keys are always a letter followed by a number in case there's any ambiguity. And then we use the down arrow here to go down. Up arrow will still take you back to the previous panel. But remember, if you go down, same rule as in the vanilla module, if you have not cut all valid wires, you strike and the panel will not budge. Now, this continues for three panels in all. So let's consider this one. Purple and white. B-O-T? Nope, that's a zero, so none of those characters exist. We move on to the next one. Another green. ET1, no. Red and orange, CMS, WZ0, we've got that, we can cut it. Red, green, PWX, oh, we got a P right there, so that's a cut. And yellow, X37, that's a cut. One more panel, yellow, orange, R56, R56, that's not there. And then IPQ, we've got an P on the last key over here, so that's a cut. Green and purple, T13, BH4. Um, I see none of those keys, or so help me, so that will be a pass. Uh, wire number three is solid purple. LV9 is also absent. Another purple and a yellow this time for wire number four. AU2. Two is on there, we can cut that. Uh, were there others? Nope, LX5 wasn't there. Purple is coming up empty on this one. But we can cut wire number four, and finally, green again, and yellow, you would wrap around. You see the instances uh, loop around, one through eight, and then nine to 15 on the second pass through. NR7, that's a cut, and we can go down, and that solves the module. Look at all these blinking wires. What are we going to do about them? On the subject of blinking wires, the objective is to use the arrows provided to set the three LEDs provided to the correct colors, and then cut one of the five wires provided. To start this module, we press any arrow. And that gets these LEDs blinking. We can use the right and left keys to change which LED is blinking, and then up or down to change the color of the blinking LED. Otherwise, all we do now is we use these three lookup tables here. First LED. If there are three or more orange wires, that's true. Set the first LED to orange and cut the last orange wire. Bip, bip, bip. Wait a second. When we get told to cut a wire, we will never change which wire we cut. We'll instead remember that wire, but we still have to cut the wire after all the LEDs are set. So we will be cutting the last orange wire, which is five. But first, let's go through the other two tables and the other two LEDs. If both the first and the last wire are green, false. If exactly four wires are yellow, false. If there are two adjacent purple wires, this does count as a purple wire because it's any part purple. It counts as an orange and a purple wire, but there aren't two purple wires in any event, so that's false. If there's no more than one red wire, that is true, so we set the second LED to red. And now we move on to the third if otherwise table. If there is at least one blue wire uh, and no white wires, well, there's no blue, so that's false. If three and five are not green, true, set the third LED to green and 
cut the no last non-green wire, well, it's coincidentally this, but still, that instruction of which wire to cut we disregard because we already got one on a previous table. As you see, the third LED will always offer you a suggestion of which wire to cut, so you will never go without. But if you're already told, stick with the first thing you were told. In either case, though, that's wire 5, so with all the LEDs set, we cut the wire if the scroll wheel doesn't take off on us. And that's the module solved. Let's do it one more time. Clear all these colors away. Press an arrow key to begin the module, and let's try again. If there are three or more orange wires, there's only one at position three. If wire four is red, yes it is, so set the first LED to red. Second LED. If both the first and last wire are green, that's true. Set the second LED to green and cut the second green wire. That's going to be wire two. No matter what, we will be cutting wire two at the end. Third LED. If there is at least one blue wire and no white wires, that's false, there are white wires, so the and condition fails. If wires 3 and 5 are not green, they both are, so that's false. If there are no yellow wires in even positions at a 2 and 4, that's true. Set the third LED to yellow and cut a wire that I couldn't care less about. Instead, we will take this condition, cut the second green wire. That's wire 2. That's a solved module. All the small panels are open for this one. This is Key Score. Key Score, the objective is to assess the score of all six of these keys, both the symbols and the alphanumeric taken as a whole, and then press them in low to high order. The value of the symbol keys is the value of their symbol multiplied by the value of their corresponding LED, first, second, third, first, second, third, exactly as you see here. So cursive H has a value of nine times yellow, which has a value of four. Nine times four is 36. Black star has a value of 2 times purple 6 is 12. The droopy R has a value of 15. And a green is 2, which is 30. 15 times 2 is 30. And then the alphanumeric keys, this is one the diffuser can potentially solo. It is the alphanumeric position of the letter times the number. So K is the 11th letter of the alphabet, 11, times 2 makes 22. I is the ninth letter of the alphabet, times 1 is 9, and P is 16, times 5 is 80, which blows everything else out of the water. And now we press the keys in low to high order, starting with 9, 12, 22, 30, 36, and 80. Simple as that. Let's do it one more time. Ah, uh, you're all the same color. That's boring. This one. Let's see. Kitty without a shield, so not this symbol, but this one, is 25 times its corresponding LED. 1 to 1, 2 to 2, 3 to 3, remember. So green is 2. That means 25 times 2 is 50. AE has 14. Second key to the second LED is 4. So that is 14 times 4, 56. And uh, gamepad times orange is 40. Finally, let's see. S is 19 times 7, which is 133. Calculators are allowed. 7 times 1 is 7. Or G is the seventh letter, times 1 is 7. And Z is 26. Doubled is 52. And the low to high order this time is 7, 50. Uh-oh. Well, you see, I've gotten that order wrong. I've genuinely gotten that wrong, I confess. But let me just show you that once you press all of one type of key, that's a strike. And now let's get the order correct, shall we? 7, 40, 50, 52, 56, 133. Glad to know there are latent strikes in this, at least, just in case you realize you've made an error. But other than that, it's as simple as that, if you press the buttons correctly. On the subject of line keys, symbols, alphabet, and arrows means that one of these keys is the only one who seems to be able to tell the truth. The rest of them lie. And it's up to us to determine who are the liars and who is the truth teller. To start this module, we need to press the big diamond button, and then a few keys will light up. Now, this line of lights matches the diagram in the manual, one of these diagrams in the manual, save for one light. That's the line key. 
Careful, in the manual, white rectangles represent lit lights and black represent unlit. We're going to scroll through each of these five patterns and that will produce five liars, a different liar each time. And the answer to dis disarm the module is the key that is the only one that did not lie. That's the key we press to disarm. So here we have one, two, four, five. So we're looking for a pattern that is one, two, four, five white, except one key is different. In this case, in this diagram, if key two were unlit, then the pattern would match perfectly. So key two lied. This is easy enough to note on a notepad, so I will trust you can note that, and I will note it down with my epic pen here, and move on to the next pattern. One, six, lit. Well, in this case, if one was unlit, it would match this pattern of only six lit, so one lied. Two down, three to go. Next. Two, three, four, five. We have this pattern here, two, three, five, but um, four was lit when it shouldn't have been, so that lied. Next, one, two, five. Again, we're looking for whites here. Where are those white rectangles? One, two, five. Um, ah, here is one, two, white, but five was lit when it shouldn't have been. Sometimes you get the opposite. It was unlit when it should have been lit, but either way, that's a lying key. So we go down to the final one, which is two, four, five. There are only two possible liars. We get a different one each time. And for two, four, five in white, what have we? Aha, here's two, four, five, six. So there's an example of a light not turning on when it should have. Six lied and all the keys except three have lied. That's the answer to disarm the module. Okay, folks, this is it symbols, arrows, and LEDs, and, as you can see from my annotations, a bunch of algebra. However, the algebra is not that daunting. Here is a solving method you can use to easily defeat this module. What we're going to do is we're going to mash the same arrow consistently. It produces an X value from 1 to 6. These symbols down here produce a value from 1 to 6. They have a presumed value over here, but one of them is lying, and the objective is to press the key that is lying about its uh, default offset value. Now when we press this arrow consistently you notice the colors are cycling either because they're static and just looping on the same color or in the case of the first LED going back and forth between two colors. Here's how to read that in the table. So step one is we need to get these LED colors. Red is going to blue and blue is going to red. That's how you read this table. So this first LED when you press that arrow is producing an offset of five. So that's what we're going to insert for the first Z value. Uh, as soon as I can get that text box to go, five is here. This is a modulo six sum that will come into play later. Now green stays green. That's the second LED cycling. Its Z value is one. And the blue LED is staying blue. So that's an offset value of zero like this. So that is the sum of this arrow value from 1 to 6 and each respective keypad value from 1 to 6. These uh, symbols and LEDs are linked accordingly. Now, uh, the next step is to get the Y values, the presumed Y values from these keypad symbols. That's a symbol as, that's as simple as looking at the symbols in the manual. So backwards N is a value of 1. Lambda is a value of 5. And jigsaw piece is a value of four. Now we need to insert a value of X from one to six. It's supposed to be the same value, but you'll see what happens in a moment. Um, you need to insert a value of one to six to make each respective sum true. If there is no such number, we need to modify these values by adding six, the Z values, because they were modulo six sums. So therefore we're going to add six whenever necessary so that when we go to plug in values of x, there is a consistent, there is a value from one to six we can plug in in each case. And what's going to happen when we do this is that one number is going to stick out from the rest. The reason it does is because this keypad value is not actually one, it lied. So actually it was, uh, this x value was two and the keypad symbol was really three, but either way, 
it's not one, so this is the correct answer. The other thing I'm going to demonstrate is that this does have a, the web design uh, exploit, so you can hit the other wrong buttons, as I'm going to do here. Wrong, wrong, right. And you can defeat the module that cheesy way as well, just in case. But I'm hoping this solving method helps. Let's do it one more time once I put everything back to normal. Um, just like this. Drop the bomb and let's play one more time. All right. Real quick this time, we are going to cycle one arrow key consistently, and let's see. Look at each LED consistently, so the first LED is going from green to purple to yellow to blue. Green to purple, purple to yellow, yellow to blue, blue to green, not coincidentally is all producing the same value of 4. So, this is 4. Now, um, the second LED, when you press this button, red to orange and orange to red. Red to orange, orange to red. Offset is two. Press the arrow key again. Red to blue, blue to red. Red to blue, blue to red. Offset is five. Um, now we get, those are the Z values from the LEDs. Let's do the Y values from the symbols. Hand racket is two. Um, semicircles is four. And kitty without a shield is one. Now we need to insert X values to make this sum true. Uh, the respective sums true, rather. If Remember to plug in values from 1 to 6. If this is impossible, increase Z by 6, because these are sums, modulo 6. Now we can plug in an X value. Now we can find the X value that is different. That means its Y value is a lie. That means we press, with a cursor preferably, that button. Hope that helps. That was probably the trickiest module in the pack. Maybe except for the ones that are coming up. Please let me know in the comments if you have any questions. The entire right side of the mod kit is filled in this time, which means it's time for LED directions. This time, we are taking three stages with the LEDs and the alphanumeric keys, each corresponding to stages from left to right. One, two, three. Very simple premise. Take the color of the LED and consider that table, and then uh, take the rules in order Keeping in mind that this is not an if-otherwise table, so we need to consider every single rule, no matter what. So, considering the key delta 6, and considering the LED blue, and considering the edgework honor bomb, which we can see here at the top of our screen, because we're using the little edgework cheat tweak mechanic, let's go. If the bomb is an empty port plate, press down. That's false. There are two port plates, but they both are occupied. If the left arrow is red or blue, there you see it's red, so the press will be up. If the keys number is less than one or nine, I believe it should be just simply zero or nine. In any event, that is false. If the keys letter is between H and P in the alphabet, it's D, which is not, that's false. And if the diffuser has not yet pressed a direction in this stage, press up. But we have, so that is false. So the answer is up, and then to submit our answer, we press the alphanumeric key. That's a good sign to get that red LED. It means we've done it correctly, and we are on to stage two, yellow and echo zero. So up to the yellow table we go. Let's see. If the bomb is four or more batteries, yes we do, two pairs of double A's, four batteries. If the key's number is prime, zero is not prime. Uh, if the up or down arrow is blue, they are green and yellow, so that's false. If the key's letter is a vowel, yes, he's a vowel. And if the diffuser has not yet pressed the direction on the stage, it's nice of it to always offer an arrow, but we have pressed arrows already, so no need. So the sequence we need to press is left to right. If we either botch the arrow sequence completely, or partially, and or press a key that hasn't the wrong key for that stage, we get a strike and the input resets. So in that case, press the arrow keys in the correct order, then press the stage, and we're on to the next one. So with the timer accelerating, we're onto another yellow LED and Z2. If the bomb is four or more batteries, still true. Two is prime, that's true. If the up or down arrow is blue, false. If the keys letter is a vowel, Z is not a vowel, false. And we have pressed the direction yet, so that not condition is false. The presses are left, down, and submit. Let's do it one more time. 
This time we have yellow, green, red. So for the third time in a row, we will be considering the yellow table, this time with a fresh set of edge work. If the bottom is four or more batteries, this time only two, that's false. Nine is not prime. If the up or down arrow is blue, not this time either. If the keys letter is a vowel, brace for impact. I'm going to assume Y is not a vowel in this context. So it's up the direction. We have not yet pressed the direction, so we press up in this case. And that is correct. Phew, I was actually genuinely worried about that. But between this and not who's on first, I'm glad that Y is generally considered to be a consonant. Just like on Wheel of Fortune. Uh, second stage is green and K2, the second LED and second keep, uh, alphanumeric symbol. If the key's letter is in the word stage, K is not in the word stage. If the right arrow is not green, but it is, so that's false. Does the bomb have a bob? Does the bomb have a bob indicator? That's false. Is the key's number less than six? True. We have already pressed the direction, so that's false. So it's left and then the keep. And we are on to stage three which is red and I1. If the key's number is five, no, it isn't. Is I in the serial number? No, it is not. One is, but it asks for the key's letter. If the bomb is a DVID port, we're looking for a red rectangle and not seeing any on the port plates, so that's false. If all LEDs are unique colors, presumably, that's down, so that's true. And we have pressed the direction this stage, so that is false. So the sequence is down, press the key, and that is that. LED directions disarmed. Courtesy of the third man, this is on the subject of the third wire. For this module, it is our first module we are looking at with four components, wires, symbols, alphabet, and LEDs, but the premise is quite straightforward. Consider the colors, or in this case color, of the third wire. Count how many other wires and LEDs share a color in common with it. So in this case, this other wire at position four is the only one with a matching color. So we have one third wire color match. Then we take the first serial number digit, which we see on the Edgework Helper, is five. Consider the symbol or character at that intersection. If that symbol or character is present, we press it and the module is solved. Otherwise, we consider Manhattan distances. Which symbol or character has the fewest orthogonal moves to reach the symbol we just reached? There are a couple ways for Diffuser and Expert to communicate this. One is that Diffuser can simply read out all the symbols in alphanumeric keys and the number of matches, or Expert can read them off like it's who's on first, or, po or poetry, excuse me. So, Kitty without a shield, alpha T, uh, letter T, that could get confusing, you see, but in this case, we have a T on the module, so we press that. If there is a tie, it is Diffuser's choice which is pressed, and please also note that the map doesn't wrap around. So for example, these colored rings are the priority rings for Manhattan, di Manhattan distances of zero, one, two, and three. Let's play one more time. Clear away all this color art. And I mean all of it. And play again. Now we have a green and white wire. Let's see here. No, no, we have two wires here that match the color white. These LEDs are considered, but in this case we have no matches here as well, no green LEDs. So we have two third wire color matches. The first number in the serial number is seven. At the intersection of these two values is omega. Do we have an omega? No. So we start taking Manhattan distances of one, one orthogonal move away, and we see that the character one is available on the module. So we press that alphanumeric key, and that is the module disarmed. Everything except the LEDs for the last in line, the objective of this module is to press all six keys that are present. We get the first one for free, but for the remaining ones, we need to move from key to key using only the rules indicated by the wire colors present. Cutting these wires actually has no consequence, but the colors that are present on the wires has everything to do with it, as it will give us five possible rules in order to move us from key to key, and the objective it's to light up all six keys in order to win. So let's consider these five rules. Solid orange pertains to left from alphanumeric to even digit. We are currently, quote unquote, standing on back-to-back -back Ks, which is a symbol, so this is false. We're not on a digit in the serial number. We're not on an even digit. We're not on a letter. 
from symbol to letter and serial number. Down from symbol to letter and serial number, I should say. Um, do we have Q, Y, or M in the serial number? No, we don't. So we have no valid moves given by the five wire colors. Only in this circumstance are we allowed to hit the big diamond button and get five new wires. Otherwise, we strike if there was a valid move and we missed that. Let's see. Solid white asks us to move from a digit in the serial number, which is false. Green blue, up from symbol to odd digit. We can do that up to Y7. Now we are standing on Y7. This is still false. Now this is false. We still have to consider all the five wires again, but solid white is false again. Purple and white is here from vowel, which is not Y to even digit. So that's false. Fourth wire is purple and yellow, which is here from odd digit to a digit in the serial number. This is true. Eight is in the serial number. So we go down to Q8 arrow then key in order to move to key Q8. Now we have to consider this again. Digit in the serial number to a symbol? Yes, we can do this rule now. Right to this symbol. How about now? Um, we can't, we're not on a digit in the serial number, we're on a symbol. We don't have an odd digit to move to, so this is false. We're not on an odd digit, we're not on a vowel. What's the remaining rule? Green and white. From odd digit to even digit? Nope, we can't make any moves anymore from our symbol, so we have to reset the wires. This orange and purple wire here is my favorite one because I know offhand this means right from symbol to symbol. This is a rule that comes up frequently enough, so it's worth knowing this one over all the others offhand, in my opinion. So I've made that move right from symbol to symbol, and now let's see what the remaining ones are. One thing I should also mention is that you will, every time you reset, always get a valid wire for the next move. Um, green and purple, we are not on a vowel. Red and yellow from alphanumeric to symbol is false. Orange, purple, as we discussed, is symbol to symbol. Blue to purple, we are not on a symbol. Red and green, we are not at an alphanumeric, so standing on our symbol, we need to reset and look for a wire which we now know will give us a valid move. Not green and yellow, though. Up from symbol to alphanumeric. You know, come to think, as I make this tutorial now, I think that's another good one to know. Up from symbol to alphanumeric. That lights up all six keys, and that disarms it. Color Dominance is the name of this module, and boy is it a colorful module, and it's about to become even more colorful. Watch what happens when I press this big diamond button. All the symbol keys light up with a different color. Now you are ready to play. Make sure you press the big diamond button to begin this module. Count how many instances of each color occur, not on the arrow keys, but everywhere else, on wires, the symbol colors, and the LEDs. So for red, we have one, two, three. So that is three. As for green, we have one. So one here. Um, for blue, we have one, two, three, four, five. And for yellow, one, two. For orange, just one. And for purple, one, two, three, four. If there were a tie, the leftmost column is the dominant column. Otherwise, the most frequently occurring color is our dominant color. This is a multi-stage module and we start on stage one. Whichever color is dominant, that's the instruction we follow. So for stage one, we cut wire two. Now, when we cut a wire or extinguish an LED, that decreases the counts. So with this green and blue wire cut, we decrease the counts for green and blue. So now, these are the current counts. This still means that blue is dominant because per the tiebreaker rules, it is tied for most and it is the leftmost column among those that are tied. So for stage two, blue is dominant, press the center key. This extinguished a purple LED. So now purple's count decreases. Blue remains dominant. For stage three, blue is dominant, press the right arrow. This time a purple LED extinguished. So not really much is changing in the standings here, but you can see how sometimes if the dominant color is the one that decreases, that will be 
uh, change in which instruction you follow for each stage. And finally, for stage four, press the big diamond. Oop! Press the big diamond button when the last digit of the countdown timer is zero. There's your zero right over here. So that is a solved module. Let's play it one more time. We have a big diamond button to start it off. And let's count it all up. Remember, don't count the arrows. We have for red, we have one, two, three. For green, we have one, two, three. For blue, we have one. That's it. Yellow, one, two, three. Man, blue only had one. How the mighty fall. Um, Orange has one. That's yellow. That's two on orange. And purple has one, two, three. Multi-waist high, so we might see a change in the pecking order here, but right now, red is the dominant color. Stage one, red is the leftmost tied column, so we cut wire one. This decreases the counts on green and yellow. Now down to two each. Once again, red is the dominant color for stage two, so we press the leftmost key. This extinguishes green, and its count decreases. Press the, for the red key, down arrow. This extinguished a green LED, and... One remark I'll make that is if you cut a wire or press a symbol key, its corresponding colors will go out. With an arrow key, it appears to be random, so just keep that in mind. However, we still have three reds on the module, so uh, press the big diamond button when the last digit of the seconds timer is four. There we go, four here, four here, solve the module. This time the symbol keys have taken a hike, which means it's time to disarm precise wires. This is a very straightforward premise. We need to just follow these rules from top to bottom in order to cut these wires in an exact order. The trickiest part is getting the colors of these alphanumeric keys, which this first step asks us to take. Use the table below to get the corresponding color of each alphanumeric key. So we'll start there. So we treat these as coordinate pairs. So let's use our line tool here. 7V, this is a yellow key. So you'll note this down in your notepad, but for visual ease, we will note this down with a yellow pen, annot pen annotation. Next is U5, so 5U is a green key, so we will note that accordingly. And, excuse me, there we go. And finally, 3 G is also yellow. Interesting. So, this key is yellow. Now, with those established, we can follow this, the rest of step one. For each alphanumeric key pair, cut the wire that is exactly those keys' colors, if present. So, there are three ways to pair uh, three colors off. Do we have a yellow and green wire over here? Do we have green and yellow? That's the same thing. Do we have Yellow and yellow means a solid yellow wire, but that's not present, so we move on. For each LED pair, do we have any of those wires present? Do we have a yellow and red wire? Do we have a yellow and blue wire? Yes, we do right here. We cut it at step two. Do we have a red and blue wire? No, we don't. Down we go. For each pair of opposite wires, cut the wire that is exactly those arrows colors of present. Do we have red and yellow? Do we have blue and green? No, we don't. For each pair of adjacent arrows, there are four pairs of these. Do we have blue and yellow? Well, yes, but we already cut it. Yellow and green? No. Green and red? Yes, we cut that. Red and blue? No. Down we go. For each alphanumeric key and LED pair occupying the same relative positions, that means essentially that we are drawing connectors first key to first LED, second key to second LED, third to third, and we compare these pairs against our wire colors. Do we have yellow to yellow? Do we have red and green? Well, yes. Do we have blue and yellow? Well, yes, but they're already cut. So in that case, we have no new wires to cut. Finally, cut any remaining wires in ascending numerical order to disarm precise wires. I've loved all the ModKit modules where the symbols and the alphanumeric keys are instead used for their LEDs, much like in this case where, when we press the big diamond button, these binary lights come on, well, in this case, one binary light, came on to denote a binary number. Now remember your binary. 
from right to left, least significant to most significant, these are the bits. Add up the sum of all the lights to determine your binary position. So only the four light is on, so that's four. But if we had eight and four, that'd be 12 and so forth. Our starting position is indicated by the lights. So zero four, which is here, and our destination is the sum of the serial number digits. Supposedly mod 64, but if you think about it, that's literally impossible. Zero two is... Where is zero two? My goodness. Here it is. Now, you can only cross these colored dots if there is an LED with those colors present on the module. So, a valid route to the destination might go something like this. So we can go left. We use the arrow keys to move through the maze. So now we're at 51 right now. Let's clear the route away to show our current position. And you notice that our position updated. 32 plus 16 is 48, plus 2 plus 1 is 51, indicating our current position. As you might expect with the maze, if you crash into a solid wall, which would happen if we went up, or a colored dot gateway, where an LED of that color is not present on the module, if we go left, both of those result in strikes. Let's be more careful going forward, huh? Now let's go down, left, down. We are now at position 52, add those lights up. But now we're at a green gateway, but we can exit that green gateway because we have a green LED on the module. Go down, that's 49. Left, left, left to 11. Up, right, right to 39, up to 57, and when we go left to 2, the module will automatically disarm. And at last we have arrived. This is the summit of the mod kit. All five components, a full house, the full Monty. This is Paranormal Wires. On the subject of Paranormal Wires, the objective is to cut all five of these wires. However, the catch is that every time we cut a wire, something will change about one of the other four components. It is Diffuser's job to identify what changes and what it changes to. There is no need to read any of this information out, but it is important to know what the change is. So, let's cut this wire, any wire is safe to cut first, and see if you can spot what changes about the other four components. Ready? Did you spot it? This LED on the right hand side changed colors. So Diffuser says an LED changed color. Expert consults the if an LED changed color, if otherwise table. Is the new color red or blue? No. Do all three LEDs have the same color? Not quite. Otherwise, cut the last yellow wire. Cutting the last yellow wire refers to all uncut wires, if it ever asks you to consider the last wire or the second wire or something, only consider the uncut. In this case though, we don't have any yellow wires. There is no last yellow wire. Whenever you get told to cut a wire that does not exist, instead cut the topmost uncut wire, this one. But notice when I cut that wire, this light came on. So Diffuser has to notice every single time they cut a wire, what the change is. This time, a symbol light came on. So we go to, if a symbol's light turned on, was it green? No. Was it the center symbol? No. Otherwise, cut the third orange wire. Again, an impossible wire. So we consider we cut the topmost uncut wire. Again, get ready. Another change is going to occur. This LED changes this time. So once again, an LED has changed color. Is it red or yellow? No. Do they all have the same color? No. Otherwise, cut the last yellow wire, a non-existent wire. So we cut the topmost uncut wire. And then since we have only one wire to cut, that is a solve. Let's do it one more time with a fresh set of wires because I want to show you something else as well. Again, any wire is safe to cut, we'll cut here. Watch the change, here it comes. This time this alphanumeric keys light come on. Sometimes there are more subtle or surreal changes such as an arrow changes color or sometimes the symbol or alphanumeric key will change its uh, contents paranormally, but that's the module. In this case though, an alphanumeric light turned on. Is it red? Yes, cut the last odd wire that is not white. This is wire five. However, this time we're gonna do something unusual and strike on purpose. 
we're going to cut this wire, wire number two. But notice that when we cut the wrong wire, we'll get the strike, but a change will happen and we still always need to react to the last change that occurred. Watch as the strike goes off and something changes. Ready? Okay, the strike occurred and then probably one of the most conspicuous changes occurred. This LED started getting faulty wiring. So we now consult, regardless of what the last rule was, the last change. An LED started flickering. Is the LED's color green? Yes. Cut the first green wire that is not orange. So in this case, we cut this wire. And again, be on the lookout for the change. This key over here, that's one of those subtler changes. This alphanumeric key changed its contents to N2. So, is the new letter, an alphanumeric key changed rather. Is the new letter a vowel? No. Is the new number in the serial number? Yes, it is. Two is there. In that case, cut the last green wire that is not wire one, three, or five. We have no green wires at all, so we have to cut the topmost uncut wire. That's this one. The last wire doesn't matter. We cut it, and that is a solved module. And that is, at last, the end of the mod kit tutorial. Thank you so much for watching this, especially if you watched it all the way through from start to finish. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this. And as always, if you have any questions or comments, any feedback, I'm sure there'll be plenty to discuss with all the content here. Any better solving methods? I'd love to hear it. Please put it in the comments below. Thank you very much.